It's 206. Okay, this is a. Uh, we're actually uh, live right now. This is Tony Ross from TonyTeach.com and BigBlockBooks.com. Um, say that three times real fast. Um, so we're getting last little technical things out of the way. And uh, if you're thinking you cannot see my camera, it's because I don't have a camera set up. It's just my mic, so you should see a pulsing logo of mine. And I am joined uh, by my good friends Eric Fares as well as Kelly Silverman. Uh Wait a minute, wait a minute, why am I messing this up? Such a wonderful start already. Yes. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm turning the right things on. Uh, if you're on our page, you should be able to ask questions. Uh, this is being recorded. Um, we're actually recording right now. So, uh, And letting you know, we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be doing a live demo of using the program uh, PubCoder and showing you exactly why it is an awesome piece of software. Let's see. Let me turn on a couple of things here. Uh, but basically, I'm going to create a read out loud book. I'm going to create it live um, while sitting here and show you how easy it is. Um, I have a lot of programs on my... There it is. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. There. Okay. That's better. So, working... Um, I've been working with my partner Chris Cartledge uh, probably it's been about a year now we've been looking into creating interactive children's books uh, and started looking at the things that were out there and like oh that that looks cool okay how are they how are they doing this so we started a very long journey and we started building uh, pieces using uh, flash animation and then converting that over into HTML5 uh, and then bringing that over into Adobe InDesign and 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 just learning how to build different ebooks or ePubs with that. Um, and I'll explain in a little bit for those of you who are not familiar with what what an ebook or ePub and all those little fun little names are. But we the techniques we were using it was we we finally got things working and we kept testing and testing and saying okay well yes we got this to work on. We got this to work on the iPad, but it's not work. The sound isn't working on the iPhone, and going backward and forward, and even contacting uh, some of the people who actually helped write the JavaScript code uh, that we use, and it was it was kind of it, we finally got everything to work. And I was like, yes, this is doable. It just takes a little bit of time. So what we figured was, in theory. Uh, because of the types of books we were writing, we're writing educational books and writing on the rules of things like there, there, and there, or two, two, and two, making them fun. But at the same time, uh, we didn't, we weren't necessarily trying to write Dr. Seuss, if that makes any sense. That being said, mm -hmm. we had figured out that we could do about two book, two books in a month. Um, and that's illustrating and animating and getting them put out. And that's what the techniques we had been using. So uh, a few months ago, I started looking into I said, well, I noticed my daughter was uh, looking at these read out, read out loud books. And I was like, I think I saw somewhere where there's a tutorial on how to do that. And it's like, yes, it would be an extra step, but it would make, uh, make the books kind of stand out. So I started looking up the tutorials on it. And in the process, I came across this incredible program. PubCoder. And not only does PubCoder do read out loud, uh, it solved 150% of our issues. Uh, so we've been able to uh, pull certain things out of our pipeline. Uh, for instance, there is no longer uh, having to jump through multiple programs. And where, long story short, we were originally saying we would be able to do about two books within a month. Uh, with PubCoder, that's that number has now jumped to between four and six <laughs> because it's that easy. So, uh, what I want to show you, I'm going to show you a little bit of um, 
I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, one of the files that uh, we built, and this is uh, one of the first tests. Uh, I recently just did a tutorial on exactly how we did a little drag and drop with this little character, the little cat and a fiddle. And the interface, and this might look a little bit complex, but the project I'm going to build live is not this one, but I'm going to show you everything from start. Uh, but uh, the program, every time I keep, I keep looking and thinking, well, guys, it'd be cool if you added this. And I'm like, oh, it, it's there already. That, that's awesome. <laughs> so, um, but what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead up here and I'm going to make a new project. And um, I'm going to create a blank project. And hey, Tony, just real quick, your voice is cutting in and out a little bit. And I don't know if it's just my computer, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Thank you. Um, Eric, are you hearing me okay? Is Eric there? Uh, <laughs> Eric had to grab some food. He said. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so I will keep that in mind. Let's see. I'm going to jump, switch something on my monitor real quick on my sound system. That was not what I meant to do. Okay. All right, so I'm going to switch that on to, um, should hopefully help my sound. Um, so when you first create a document, and it's going to give you like a little bit of project info, and you can always go back in and change this. Uh, so I'm going to do a diddle, and this is just going to be the webinar. And again, I can always come back in and change this a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And here is one of the awesome things about the program. I was recently talking to a friend of mine. I said, I've cracked the code. I've found this awesome program you can make you can make these ebooks with. And he says, well, well, what format can you make them in? <laughs> I was like, uh, every format. <laughs> so um, an EPUB 3. A uh, little bit of background. EPUB 3 is like when ebooks first came out, there were pretty much like EPUBs and what E, um, sort of electronic publications or anything, but an EPUB 3 allows things like sound, video, as well as HTML5. So uh, things like if you've ever drawn in a coloring book online or uh, things like that have a little bit of interactivity, but it's not Flash. Nine times out of ten, it's using HTML5, and so there's JavaScript and other things mixed in. Mm -hmm. So that's what EPUB 3 allows you to do, and it's kind of one of my favorite formats to work in. Uh, you also have the option to set up uh, things uh, using the iOS app or building an Android app or building uh, something that's just for a browser using HTML5. And last but not least, you can even uh, create a Amazon book, which is uh, the KF8. Amazon usually has their own proprietary uh, formats, so they, they don't necessarily do um, EPUB 3, uh, but they do something called KF8. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a EPUB 3 because I like how flexible it is. And for the page size, I'm just going to use a generic 1024 by 768. The reason I like the size is that size usually exists uh, in Android and other things, so I can just jump from uh, format to format. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this in landscape. And the other thing is, uh, the program is set up, the, the creators of PubCoder, they're in Italy which is always awesome, and talk about the, the way technology is. I love having, getting in conversations with them because it's like I have to go, okay, they're five hours ahead of me, <laughs> so how early do I have to get up? So uh, you can set up things in uh, multiple languages within your document, so that's kind of cool. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, and it's going to ask me to save this file. Okay. Hey, diddle diddle webinar. Sounds good. And we'll just go ahead and now me personally, I 
try not to do spaces, so I like to do underscores in my file names. That's just a personal thing. Okay, so when this first gets here, you're kind of looking, this is the interface you're working with. And let you know right up here, you're working with an EPUB 3 at 1024 by 768. For those of you who are used to working in inches, this is pixels, as in 72 pixels, about 72 pixels per inch. And it's letting us know we're working in English and landscape. That uh, interface is very clean. It is. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, again, one of the things, when they first said that there was this program, I'm like, okay, it can do it can do all the stuff. What does it look like? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. um, so what I want to do, like, um, basically we have this first area here for objects. And the objects are broken down into layout. For instance, there's image, text. Do you want to add a button? Uh, video, audio, rectangle, ellipse. There are also widgets. Um, this is the... Um, there's masked images, pan and zoom, uh, adding a quiz, coloring games, memory games. Um, I just want to just iterate something real quick. Just from someone who actually has done uh, some basic programming in Flash, I am by no means that good at it. There are people who blow me away. Uh, but the ability just to just step in here and a lot of the stuff, all these things are drag and drop. Uh, so a coloring game or a memory game, stuff like that. Uh, smart objects and other things like that. A lot of this we're not going to get into today, but the main area I'm going to stick to is way up here at the top. I'm going to stick just to the layout area. But just letting you know, this program, um, I would dare argue, I'm, I'm going to step out on here, and if anyone actually says, well, actually, this other program is, is way better. Here is my thought on this. Um... <laughs> You know, if like when you go into Photoshop and you just go in there to just make a quick color correction, like get rid of someone's red eye or something like that, but the program is so much more than that. It, I feel like every other day I'm finding out something new about this program, and they're constantly updating it, and it's it's so sweet. Okay, so um, what I want to do at this point, I'm going to come down here and look at, this is the, uh, right down here, the base is the book. There's a cover, and that's what's selected right now. And they also gave us like a page, so they haven't actually given us anything new yet. So right now I'm just looking at the cover, and what I can do is, uh, let's say if I want an image on the cover, I can just drag that over, and I can drag, if you notice really quick, these little guides that are showing up letting me know, oh, by the way, that's set in the center. And it'll also snap right to the edge there. Mm -hmm. And if I'm saying, okay, I'm just going to click and drag the side here. So it gets to about the right size that I want. Now, if I remember right, I don't think I brought in... Okay, so I can drag an image here, or I can click to import. Um, and again, the... This, I keep forgetting how, how, again, how cool this program is. Um, so it's like import from disk or import from the internet. We'll talk about import from the internet in a second because that, in again, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to go grab something from the desk. And let's see if I have... I believe I have... Small... Ah, there it is. <laughs> I'm going to bring in, because I forgot to bring in an old school cover, but this is a Hey Diddle Diddle cover, 1024 by 768 in a PNG format. What is a PNG, in case you don't know? Uh, portable network graphics. Um, there's JPEGs, which are awesome because they can look like photos, and then there are GIFs, which are awesome because they have transparency, but GIFs usually only have 256 colors. A PNG which was supposed to kind of replace <laughs> um, GIFs, and, or GIFs, and however you want to pronounce it, <laughs> and JPEGs. Um, a PNG gives you really beautiful, 
photo quality, but it also has transparency. So it's like a JPEG and a GIF had a kid. So a little bit of background. Um, so let's bring this in. Okay. And let's see, did you actually go in there yet? Okay, so I've imported that. So that's now an asset. So I can ah, stop moving. Stop, stop. All right, I'm going to drag you right over there. Thank you. <clears throat> so this is actually the barn from, or the bar barn and background from um, our Hey Diddle Diddle. So what I can do at this point, let's go back to objects. And I can come in here and say, okay, well, let's drop in some text. And I'll simply double click on the text here, and it's going to show up and say something complicated like text. There it is. So we'll just, hey, diddle, diddle. Okay. So I can select this, and let's make this, oh, font size. Uh, I think I went with 40, something like that. Um, and this whole little area up here, you can actually add in images and start playing around with your text. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the font family just yet. Let's click on Apply Changes. And we'll close this out. Okay, it's not bad. I could technically make that probably larger. What size are we doing? Doo -doo -doo. Let's go to 100. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so there is our title, and I can actually drag in another one if I wanted to say this is uh, made but not written by. <laughs> yeah. okay. So here's the deal. All right. So I can just kind of move that around. And that's our makeshift cover for right now. And I know what you're thinking. You know what? That, that font is really awesome. I don't think we can make it any better, but what, what if we could? So I'm going to double click here. And I'm going to grab all this and we'll say font family. Make it, make it smug and comic sense. <laughs> oh, we're not doing comic sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, here's the cool thing. So you got Arial, yay. <laughs> it's like not many. Let's let's add fonts. Let, okay, let's add fonts. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Google Fonts. <laughs> so you have all of these fonts here. You can also add other ones, but I'm just gonna use um. The click on this and it says Google Fonts. Huh. Do you pay for Google Fonts? Do no, you, you do not. <laughs> yes, Google Fonts part of part of that whole little H web fonts and HTML5 stuff. Cool. So let's click on bring that one and we'll say close. And so now if I click here, I should have Ooh, that's kind of nice. Hey diddle diddle. That looks kind of cool. That's probably bigger than what I did. Nope, it actually worked. Cool. <laughs> so that actually looks like it fits. I, I kind of like that. I, and mind you, I just kind of randomly picked that one, but <laughs> kind of worked out. Okay, so we have um, Hey Diddle Diddle, and uh, what we want to do next is I want to go to the next page, so I'll simply click down here at the base, just on page two, and there's our blank page. Um, and what I want to do here is... Let's see, first thing I want to do, I think I'm going to bring in another image. And I cannot remember what size this other one is. Let's see, I'm going to import from disk. So, let's see, my webinar. Boom. Public domain images. 
Because we can. Okay. So inside here, there's... Um, I'm just getting this image just about where I want it to be. Stop that. I'm going to set you right about right here. For right now, we're worried about cropping you later. Okay. So, let's go back to objects. Let's bring in some text. And double click. And so, font family. So, we'll do hey, diddle, birds. And the fiddle. Maybe it was this one. I was trying to remember why I kept trying to use the number 40. Maybe it was this that was supposed to be 40. We'll find out. If I've said it once, the most, um, the most needed pieces of hardware and software when you're working on a computer, paper and pencil. As in, I should have actually had those notes written down, what font size I was using. Okay. Maybe there was it. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. And I think that font actually works with these guys, too. So there's Hey Diddle Diddle, the cat and the fiddle. All right. Not bad. <clears throat> so what I want to do at this point... Old nursery it. rhymes were weird. I'm, it, it, I... Yeah. I'm, I, I was thinking about that the other day going, what? I'm not exactly sure what this is about. Maybe it's like Aesop's Fable and they were trying to talk about somebody without actually saying their name. <laughs> uh, it's like... All right, so we have that sitting there. And what I want to do now, I'm going to double-click. I'm going to go back into um, this area. And what I want to start doing is I kind of work, I guess you can do this one way or the other, but I, I, tend, I typically will work this way. If I know I'm going to be doing a read aloud book, I've probably recorded it, or I'm thinking, okay, how would I say this? It's like it would be, hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. So I know where there would be, matter of fact, there probably should be, hey, diddle, diddle, the cat, comma, and the fiddle. Make me think that. Okay. So basically, um, it's going to be, hey, diddle, diddle. I know I'm going to probably pause about right here. The cat, pause, and the fiddle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up little breaks for where I want the text to be highlighted. So hey, diddle, diddle, all end up being highlighted at the same time. And then we'll go the cat. And then lastly, we'll go the fiddle. So to do this, Nothing complicated. Uh, right here, this little icon, insert read aloud splitter. Boom. So I come right here to the other comma. Now, technically, the way they set up the program, you can actually put in um, little highlighted commas or things like that and say, okay, well, yeah, I'll, I'll break every time it does that. But me personally, I love these little splitters. So... All right, so apply those changes. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And it's nothing visible here. We're all good. And what I want to do at this point is come up here and click on Read Aloud. Okay, so it says, please select the audio file that will be played by the Read Aloud system while highlighting the text. No selection. OK, again, so you're seeing this uh, repeating thing. Do you want to choose from the library, meaning we've already brought stuff in, or do I want to import the audio from a disk? Uh, I'm going to import from the disk, and I have page 1, HDD, page 1, audio MP3. OK, so. Um, and here's the cool thing, especially if you're, I think this is only on the Mac, I'm not sure if they made it for the PC yet. If you don't have an audio file, you can click Generate to create one automatically using the text-to-speech options, which is 
kind of cool. Um, but for now, I'm going to click on Next. Okay, please review the text blocks that will be highlighted one after the other by the Read Aloud system. Click Edit Blocks to change the characters that are used. Okay, now this is based on the fact that I went in before I even got here and set up my blocks. So that's kind of already exactly what I wanted. So I can click Next. Okay, now for the fun part. Um, let's see, whoops, I'm going to make sure this is going to come on. Let me turn on my speakers. Hold on one second. I'm going to turn on my computer's audio, so in theory, everyone should be able to hear this. Okay. So um, what's going to happen is I'm going to hit, uh, click the start, and it's going to give me a countdown. Then I'm going to hit my space bar to actually highlight the first words. So we hate it a little. And then I'll hit the space bar again to go to the next section. And then to the next section. So I'll click the start. Any day now. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Okay. So I'm going to preview that. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Okay. It's a little bit off. I'm going to sync that again because I think my my starting was off. Okay. Kelly and Eric, did I lose you guys? Nope, still here. Still here. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's like, it's like I, did, I know I did something weird with the audio, so I had to make sure I worked still here. Previous, go back. Okay. Next. Okay, click start. Start now. Now, does this normally do this? No, only if I'm on a webinar. <laughs> so it's like, start it. I'm going to come out of this real quick. Hey, Jenny, while you're doing that, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Um, can you, I know I didn't see the button for it, so I'm probably just, it's probably not possible, but can you record it um, in the system instead of downloading it, or is that it not even recommended because you don't have good quality sound? Um, to the best of my knowledge, you cannot record into PubCoder. Um, like I said, it, it does have the option of doing text-to-speech. Me personally... Um, and I'm, I'm just one of those things of if 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 they put it in here, I think it would be awesome. But it would, I think it would also add some, it would add more weight to the program because mm -hmm. if you notice the program moves for, moves pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I would probably use something like Audacity or something like that if I were, if I were recording. Uh, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, you can hammer in a nail with a wrench, but I'd rather use a hammer. So definitely use sound programs. Okay. Okay, let me go back here again. Let's try that next. Okay. Click to start. What is up with my computer today? Come on. I'm trying to figure out how many things. I'm a bad um have a bad habit of having multiple programs open at once. And I thought I closed out some of those, but maybe I didn't. Why is my start not working? Edit blocks. That's good. That's good. That's good. We're good. Next. That is really odd. Let's come back to that. Okay, so 
we have our text here. I'm going to do a preview real quick. Maybe, did it actually save the other one? And this is the other thing that you can do is um, see what the text looks like. Okay, read aloud, it's not on, which means it did not accept the first one. All right, we're good here. Apply changes. When in doubt, make sure everything else is working. So we'll import the audio from disk this time because, whoops, take that. Not from disk, but from the asset library since we've already imported this. All right, so we'll click OK. We'll go to Next. And Next. Ah, there we go. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Now, I think I'm much happier with the sync I did this time. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. And now if we go to Preview. All right, so here we have it, and it's not playing. OK, not a big deal. So if I click Read Aloud, Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. All right, so that's how that works. But I know you might be thinking, well, how in the world does someone know to click on that? Um, what we would probably do is just have a little image or icon saying, hey, you know what? Click on this to, to actually hear the audio. So what I want to do is drag in another little image over here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Uh, now, we've been doing import from disk, so I've been importing locally. I'm going to do something called import from the internet. Uh, a few years back, there was an awesome crowdfunding campaign where everyone was like, there's all these icons that we would love to use um, that should be Creative Commons. So people were, um, they raised funds. So there is this extensive library, and it's free to use. So I can come here and write in things like um, speaker and hit return to search. Okay. Let's see, which one is my favorite speaker? I think this one is. Um, so now, oh, by the way, there's other speakers too. So I'm going to use this one. Simply double click. Now, at this point of simply double clicking, it's um, I didn't import anything, but I do want to bring in the PNG. It's downloading it and file speaker PNG is imported successfully. If we look over here in our assets, there it is. We'll click done, and there it is on our screen. I think I do want to make that a little bit tinier. Now, here comes that fun part of, um, I would probably put something on on the page, maybe at the beginning or something. Hey, click on the speaker um, to hear the audio play. But here comes that fun part. Uh, typically, if you've ever, ever done any type of programming, it's like, okay, now it's like, well, let's go into JavaScript. Let's figure out, okay, well, I need you to play the audio, what audio, blah, blah, blah. This is the other part of the program that makes it so awesome. So I can click on this. And it's letting me know the selection. Even tells me what the width and height is, um, opacity, all those other fun things. Uh, but I'm going to go over here. One other section I want to click on interactivity. So on touchdown, I'm going to add in a new action. Hey, Tony, are you still there?
Tony, you just went quiet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can get his attention up. Nope. He just he disconnected. Mm -hmm. Yay! I just sent a message and letting him know. Yeah, I just poked at him on Skype. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is still live, <laughs> even yeah. though he's gone. It still says it's live. So now we are entertaining the audience until he's returned. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? Yeah, really. <laughs> We, can, we may not be able to answer, but we can definitely give those questions to Tony for him to answer. Yeah, it just said he left the group chat, so he, he DC'd. Mm -hmm. Yay! <laughs> oh, he said his power went out, but he'll be back on as soon as he can. Oh, his power went out? Yeah. Weird, then why is his stream still going? It should be, it should be ended. The moment he DCs. Awkward. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, there should be a on the left side, there's a Q and A. And you can just type in your questions right there. Somebody's in there. Yeah. Hello, Skipper Wing. It's good to know that there's somebody there. Okay, Tony said it should be back on in just a second. Cool. Hopefully, hopefully it works. Skipper Wing is actually asking us what our uh, what got us interested in pub coder. Well, Tony actually told me about it. I'm a children's book author. I have three children's books out right now um, through a small publishing company called Wordcraft Press. And the books are um, Man in the Moon and uh, Where's Wilson. Right now they're both in print. Um, I've got a video out, a story time video out, but I would love to know more about creating an interactive book. Um, I do have ebooks, but I think um, interactive apps are really interesting, and Tony said this is a great, and as I can see just by viewing, it's a really cool program. I think I'm back. <laughs> Tony. Welcome back, Tony. Hello, welcome back. Skipper Wing was asking us a question. Yes. 
Um, yeah, that was that was that was there. There's modem going out, and then there was oh, by the way, the, the all the lights and everything went out. It was like, uh, <laughs> so. it's like that's a little bit more extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wee bit. Um, let me let me let me at least finish up to where, where I was, and I will I'll be able, I'll jump to a question right after that. Perfect. So, what do you guys think so far? Um, it's, 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 like an interesting, <laughs> it's an interesting program. I mean, it, it, it seems like a, a good program for streamlining the process a little bit to make it so you don't have to fiddle around with, like, ten different programs and then exactly. also try to program it all together. Right. The, um, and what I'm doing, trust me, what I'm doing with this one, this, this is the... This is, this is a baby crawling <laughs> in comparison. Uh, some of the demos I've I've seen um, from me, and I was I was talking to, when I was talking to people at uh, Pop Carter, For me, it's like watching this program and what it can do. All of a sudden, it's no longer what can I program. It's hmm, let me think of something creative to do. And it's, it's kind of it's getting me back to when I was in college, like a great almost twenty some years ago, um, mm-hmm. trying to think of something creative. Like uh, one young lady did this thing of. Oh, if you uh, there are these fish that are swimming, and and if you click on ten fish, like each time you click on one of the fish, it turns to a different color. And if you click on ten of those fish, then it'll go to the next page. I'm going like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, think about it that for a minute. How long that would take you to program? And this is more in line of, can you think think of how you would actually just the the different elements you would pull to do this? Speaking of programming, okay. So, so. If it's something like that, Tony. Um, something so much more advanced and it probably doesn't have a, a specific thing in instructions. Can you type that in and they make that happen? Um, you, you, what do you mean type that in? Like, do they, uh, Would they code that in on the back end? Not nece- not necessi- it's not necessarily that they code it in on the back end. It's kind of um, what you're about to see here. You'll see different puzzle pieces. Uh, mm-hmm. For instance, I'm selecting this right now and saying, okay, there's an event. Um, so if I scroll down, um, what type of event? Is it an accelerometer? Meaning, um, if you're moving your iPad or phone around, is, this, was that, is that the event? Um, when the page first loads. loads. Um, if you're doing a pinch, so I'm just scroll, scrolling down these. Um, for instance, shake. Um, case in point, like um, if you wanted to have items if you maybe drew different items on a shelf or something like that and then you shook uh, your iPad or your Kindle then those items would, you'd say okay well then I want them to fall off the shelf or I want them to have a motion. Does that make any sense? So it's kind of you get used to on this event yes I want there to be an action. Okay now you can actually set up all the different things to the action. So for this particular item like the speaker here what I'm saying is I want to touch down And um, I'm going to add an action. And so there's drag object, hide object, move object, rotate object, run JavaScript. All these great little things. Audio, ah, start and stop, read aloud. Click. Okay. So now I should probably save this. Um, if I preview this, And if I click this again, hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. So now it knows to play that once I click on the speaker. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe? Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's for me, um, I've caught myself like um, walking around going, hmm, those little pullback cars, how would I do that in pub coder? <laughs> so it's like, okay, on touchdown, it's like, um, <coughs> excuse me, on touchdown, okay, well, yeah, I'd probably use the drag and then I'd want something to move. And this, uh, you just kind of get used to adding in different elements. Let's see. Um, whoops, let me undo that real quick. 
I'm going to add a new page since we only had two pages. Um, something I like doing a lot, sort of, is just barring um, where things are, just kind of copying and pasting, but I'm not going to do that since I've already set up my sound a certain way. I do want to go ahead and bring in a different image. So, what time? Matter of fact, what time is it? Uh, yeah, three fifty-two. Uh, so, uh, Kelly, you sent you sent me a text. Were those questions that were coming in, or those? Uh, no, those were. Que I actually was just writing those questions out for me so I could ask you at the end of the. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wow, there's a lot of questions going. On. Sorry, but I wasn't gonna erase it when I sent you a second text. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually have the um. Those there. So, oh, and by the way, to do uh, the error, I was talking with um, the people at Pub Coder, which they are incredibly awesome. Um, and I don't know if they're listening, but to Enrico and Enrico and Daniela, uh, mm -hmm. really have been enjoying the program. It's awesome. Um, but I was talking to Enrico, and we were like, we're talking about the whole the whole thing of like. He says, yeah, there are, our, our thing was to make it as smooth as possible, but all the work is really done, you know, um, under under the hood. I'm like, tell me about it. I'm like, there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> so it's like, um, for instance, let me see if, if I can find this. Assets. Okay, images. Okay. Let's see if it will like, even show me this. There is a file. Let's see if I can do this. Um, now I have I have mine already set up to open up in an external editor. I think I do. Uh, let's see. Nope, that's not where it's supposed to go. Uh, da, da, da. So you can go into your preferences, which I thought I did this already, and go into editors. And I don't think I set my code editor. That's why. Um, but I've set my image editors, my audio editors, and I can even go in and say, well, what's going to edit my code if I were going to touch code? I'm not really touching code, but I did want to show you that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Come here, Mr. Applications. Where's Text Wrangler? There you are. Okay. Done. All right. So in theory, we can better open up in the right thing. Ah, cancel. Anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this down real quick. Let's see. Save this into our webinar folder just so I can show you the file. Dun, 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 dun. Enrico is there. Kelly and Eric, did I lose you guys? No. no. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I was like, Enrico is online. Um, yes, I wasn't. Um, Enrico was letting me know to um, to insert code. I'm not. I'm not inserting the code on here, but I did want to show you um, the little thing of me going in and saying, yes, this is where I want the audio to start and stop. Um, as far or as far as um, highlighting the text, it's following this file. Now, this file was built on the back end and we didn't have to touch this. We just had we had to go, okay, I'm just gonna put in a little tab here and say this is where I want where I want that break to happen. So this is what I mean as far as um as far as all the work that's going in on the on the back end here. So it's enable read aloud. There's the smile file, there's the audio file and all those different things that are happening. So 
<laughs> I'm glad I'm saying positive things about Enrico since he's actually here. <laughs> so, um, so, okay. Um, oh, one other thing. I'm going to do one quick thing here. I'm going to drag in another image. I'm going to do this real quick. Um, There is uh, the one one little thing called the overlay I want to actually talk about, which is kind of cool. I'm going to import from the disk a different image just so we know we're on a different page. Okay, cool. Make one more. I'm going to copy this image, simply Command C, go to page four, paste, Command V, and I'm double clicking to import a different one. So I'm using a little shortcut here. So if you notice, um, even though I could go in and say exactly, um, look over here and see exactly where the X and Y are in the sizing, um, I just simply did a copy from one page, went to the other page, pasted it, um, and double-clicked inside here to actually give me a different image. Now the reason I'm doing this, I'm not really messing with my text right now, but I did want to show you um, something that's really cool. Uh, it's called the overlay. What the overlay does, I'm going to straighten this up so I don't have the overlay on the very first cover, and now I'm going to do a different overlay for the other pages here. Um, the overlay, I can come in, and if I wanted something like, if I wanted to have an image, like a little arrow, that's going to let me know that I can click to go to the next page, but I want that to be on each page. That's what the overlay is for. I'm going to double click and port from the internet. I'm going to type in an arrow. Let's say return. Give me a decent one. Here's a nice rounded one. There you are. Let's import you. Downloading. Dude, seriously? Better not be taking that long. Thank you. Okay. All right. So there is our arrow. And we'll simply go over to interactivity and on touchdown. Interaction. I'm going to scroll down all the way. Do, 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 do. Ha, ah, browsing. Go to the next page. Thank you. All right. So now if I go back to the main page, you see the arrow there. It's keeping frosted out, letting me know that that is part of our overlay. And if I were really doing this, I'd be making sure it didn't actually do that nasty little juxtaposition. Okay. So what I'm going to do now... What we've been doing is simply coming up here to do a preview, but there's a quick preview page, but there's also a quick preview of the project. So I'm just going to bring that up. And let me know when I continue anyway the process. What did I do? Ah, page four. Let me stop that real quick. Um, there should not be, let me come here and make the overlay for page four different. Basically, it was telling me um, there shouldn't be a next on page four, if I read that right. So let's try that one more time. Duh. Okay, go back there. Let's try that one more time. Tony is clicking on things way too quickly. Preview project. Okay, that's better. So we didn't get a warning. So that's how um, hands-on the project that that is. It's kind of cool because it's like I had that arrow going. Yes, go to the next page, but it was on our last page, so technically that should have been there. So now if I click here, it's going to the next page. Click there, it goes to the next page, and there's not one there. Um, but can you can you make it where it automatically goes to the next page? Can you make it? To you mean like after a certain amount of time, or you mean automatically? Yeah, like after the, they, if you have an audio play, it reads through 
and then it turns a page on its own instead of having to click the arrow? I believe you can. Um, now I'll probably get, let's see, let me jump back here. What's happening with that? Do I have any inactivity? Let me see if I can do this. If it'll let me. Hmm. I'm almost not wanting to do that live. <laughs> I think... It's the, for another day. <laughs> yeah, it might be another day. Because um, I'm not sure... Yeah, I think um, I think there might be a way, but I'm not sure. But if there were, if there would be, you'd definitely be doing it in the inter in, in the interactivity section. Yeah. Um, and just adding different um, adding different actions to it. Cool. The um, other thing that I do want to talk about real quick, and I'll ask if there are any questions. I can come down here and I can edit the project formats. Um, like I said, we built an EPUB 3. Mm -hmm. And we can easily come in and say, well, let's add another one, another type of format. So I can bring in a KF8 if I wanted to. From the world, that's more of a... KF8, a lot of the um, things, like for instance, uh, the audio that it's playing, it's actually, it, will, it will kind of not do that. Um, I can do like the Android and th different things like that. This is also again why I've, why I chose the 1024 by 768 because that's an off that's a option that's pretty there pretty much there without going too big. <clears throat> but let's say if I wanted to do let's say I'm going to do one anyway even though it's going to mess up. Um, do I want to switch to the newly created format? I'll go ahead and say switch. So if I close this out now, um, we're now in the KF8. So it actually copies everything we've done over into this new document. So when we're ready to export, um, we can export. We can say export from here, <clears throat> or publish. Excuse me, um, publish and do a KF8. We can also publish and do the EPUB3 that we created. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, the thing I was talking about earlier, I know when we, when we were doing all this stuff manually, there were programs and different websites we'd have to go to to validate whether or not something was going to work. And they have done, um, PubCoder has done an incredible job because it does all that for you. You're actually, you're not leaving PubCoder to actually get that checked. Um, that alone was just like... All right, we've got it done. Okay, well, okay, it, 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 it failed the inspection. Okay, open the EPUB back up, go into the HTML documents, change this text, change this text. Okay, change the inventory because it's missing something. And this, if you notice, there was that little um, little um, warning when I even just did the um, overlay out of place. That's the kind of warning you would get if there were, if there were an error. Um, and it just saves you so much time. And I think, no disrespect to uh, programs like Adobe InDesign or Flash, I think um, those programs are built to do so much more. Uh, they're built to do so much more than just create EPUBs. And I, and I don't mean just create EPUBs or just create eBooks. But um, PubCoder comes in and says, yeah, we're not trying to do your printed book. <laughs> we're not trying to do your game per se. We're, we're we're just going to go ahead and make ebooks and and make them well. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is um like I said, this is where in case I didn't, I'm actually I don't think I did announce this. This is a kind of informal uh, little demo we're doing today. Uh, we are in the process of we're going to be releasing. Uh, a new series of titles, and those are going to be releasing next week, and we're going to have another webinar where it's going to be a little more in detail, and talking about uh, the different, we're going to have a kind of a mama bear, papa bear, and a baby bear as far as different versions of trainings we're going to be offering, 
and we're or we're proud to say that we are even going to be working with PubCoder that a lot of our trainings you're going to be able to go ahead and get the software along with the training which is kind of awesome so that being said I'm going to jump over to words, words, words. Is this the main page? Am I on the event page? Where's my Q&A? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Da -da -da -da. Turn off the screen share. Turn off the screen share. Turn off the screen share. Thank you. Okay, so. <clears throat> That's what I was looking for. Duh. Okay, so um the questions I'm thinking right now it's like um so what got get what got us in um this is from Skipper Wings, what got you guys interested in pub coder? Um, actually, it was just kind of, we're searching for a program. There was another program we found that was like, oh, man, this is great. Um, but the program, even though it could do some incredible things, it wanted to charge you for every time you made a, uh, like if, if you made something for Amazon, it's okay, there's a charge for that. Okay, if you made something for Android, there's a charge for that. Um, and so we kept looking for something, um, when I was looking for something on how to create read aloud things. That's how I ran across uh, PubCoder and started looking into it. And it's just like, and quite frankly, and whenever someone says, "Oh, we have a program that can make an that can make an ebook," I'm like, "Great, show me your program." <laughs> and so, but I was I was pleasantly surprised with PubCoder. It's like, um, uh, giddy as a schoolgirl is what I think I would actually say. So. Kelly, did you still have questions? Um, yeah, I was. Let me see. I know I have a couple that are, I sent you over. Well, yes, you do. Kind of, some of these questions are kind of silly, but um, when you import from the internet, I know they have that ability. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to know it's public domain, or I mean, will they give you a heads up so you're not importing something that? Ah, the now the section that it goes immediately to there is act. It's called the. Is it called the Icon Project? I'm trying to remember. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm calling it by the right name. But it, it is specifically, it's not like you're running out on Google and grabbing an image. Okay. Um, this, is, this is a, uh, no, the noun project, that's what it was. Um, so there's, there's this in, incredible library that's all, all in Creative Commons. It was built specifically for that thing. So there are little things that you would normally have to go and build, mm -hmm. um, little icons and things like that. The noun project. Thank you, Enrico. Um, yes, it is the noun project. Um, but yeah, it's. I remember when that happened, and it was just like, oh, what a cool idea! Because yeah. having having um, worked and done interactive stuff before, and having to keep creating those buttons or icons, it's like, and these people came up and said, hey, here you go. So it those that's free to use. <laughs> Very cool. And then this is another side because I know you didn't get into it for this particular webinar, but with the the interactivity and you're giving it directions such as shake the image or um, or in the, the preview that you have the drag and drop. Right. Now is this something that you can do, is it something that the illustrator or author has to import to show this is the image that I need to shake, like is it something separate? How, how does that work specifically? You're, are you asking like, um, like let me see make, oh, the pictures can, you have are pretty stagnant. Like they didn't seem to move. Is there some say pictures like that? Could you make them do something or not? No, tec because technically it's all you can. Technically you can because it's still it's still a draw. It's still a object. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, I'll 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 do a quick, um, quick enough to actually make your head spin and still keep your interest without actually going into detail of what. Mm -hmm. I do. So, um, so let's say. Let's say on this page, um, can you see my screen? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So for interactivity, I'm going to click over here. So, oh, wait a minute. I'm in KF8. This is 
I, I will save my, my comments on KF8 when I'm not being recorded. Um, let's go back to the EPUB 3. Okay. Um, so, again, we, our document now, we can actually export either a KF8 or an EPUB 3. I love EPUB 3. Um, so, let's say on shake, okay? Um, we'll add an action, and then I'll say move the object. Now, as soon as I said move the object, there's this little thing that popped up here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to click and drag this, let's see, off the screen. Um, and this is where we get a little more fun. I'm going to not only say move the object, I'm going to say rotate the object. Let's see, where did it Zoom in where I need to go. Thank you. So I'm just going to rotate this little guy. Let me go back to move. Make sure he's down a little bit further. And rotate. That's better. So let's see if we rotate this totally out of there so he's not touching. Okay. So on shake. I want you to move the object, but I want you to rotate the object. Matter of fact, I kind of want it to move and rotate at the same time. This is me doing something a little more advanced. So I'm going to click on rotate and push this up. You see that little purple fuchsia bar there? Come here. Thank you. Stop it. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> now I have those actually happening at the same time. So let's move and rotate. All right. So in theory, let's preview this page. Okay, so I'm going to, um, since I can't shake my actual computer, <laughs> I'm going to click on motion up here. <laughs> and this is my motion simulator. So I've got like, okay, I can move things around here. But I can also click on, what happens if I do a shake? Okay, so let's say if it shakes, it falls off. So <laughs> falls off. Um, matter of fact, that actually fell off kind of quick. Let's go back here. Rotate object. Ah, the duration. That would be the issue. Let's say, let's make that 1.3 seconds. And make you 1.3. So again, this is like, we're telling it to rotate, but um, there are all these different settings that are down here right under that. Mm -hmm. um, acceleration, whether it's going to be easing in or out, or if it's slow, it basically... Um, ease in or ease out, it basically means that your car doesn't automatically start at 60 miles an hour. It kind of slowly gets up to that point. It doesn't also, it doesn't stop instantly. All right, so let's try this one small. All right, so motion, okay, shake. Ah, that's better. So, um, yeah, it can be, if, if, it's, if it's, is it that exciting? Well, no, not really. But what if uh, this were a gallery, you know, um, and there are pictures on the wall, and we said, uh, oh, there's an earthquake, and everyone, sh and everyone shook. You know, the, if you um, check it to show what the earthquake actually does, and so all these different things will fall over. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't have to be that static. Um, uh, the more fun you have, like we're bringing in other images, like P definitely with PNGs, you can actually have transparent backgrounds and stuff. So, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Coolness. Make sure. Um, let's see. How many formats can you use for one book? Did you still want that question, or do you know that? Do you know the answer? You answered it. Yeah, you had answered it earlier. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, the thing of you can actually have uh, multiple formats within one particular project, and then um, export what you need. Um, an app, there's nothing different than you would do other than um, within the same document. Say, okay, yes, I want an Android app, or if I want a um, an OS app, uh, iOS app. Now, the there are some extent some additional pieces of software. Um, to the best of my knowledge, I know Androids is. Um, but if you're doing, if you're saying yes, I want to make iOS apps, then there are um, additional things you have to download on your system to work with that. Um, and the same thing with Android. But for the most part, those are, if, 
eh, words. <laughs> Those are working on the back end in conju- in in tandem with PubCoder. Um, but straight out of the box, PubCoder can do an EPUB three, um, which can go directly onto like iPhone and iPad, um, and that's with all the audio, even video, um, and all the in- interactivity. Um, you can do a KF8. Uh, KF8, if I'm right, you can have video, um, but I would probably, if I were doing a KF8, I would almost limit it to just a simple picture book, just adding um, text and um, text and pictures. Mm-hmm. I will probably end up doing a, a training just specifically on. Um, a KF8, uh, just to see exactly how far I can push it inside of PubCoder. Um, I don't know. I, I was I was kind of KF8 to me is a little bit limiting because I think um, KF8 was Amazon's answer to what an EPUB3 is, and uh, without going into detail how you can do it, um, there's ways. Because I kept looking at the, what, the, these incredible interactive, what I thought they were books coming from Amazon. I was like, well, how are they doing that? That's not a KF8. And it's an Amazon app. And the only thing that Amazon app is, is technically it's an, and, it's an Android app that's been converted. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I think a KF8, if I, was go- if I were going to do something that's going to be an interactive kids book, I would probably stick toward um, an EPUB 3. And if I were trying to get it onto Kindle, then I would go the Kindle app direction. And again, you can do that um, um, via an Android app. Okay. Let's see. Wonder, da, da, da. I'm think. Did I answer Skipper Wing's question? I'm trying to remember. Mm-hmm. Okay, and answer pretty much everybody's questions. Does anybody have any more questions? Yes. Does anyone have any more questions? Because this has been kind of informal, and yes, we did have a power outage. Um, we're going to be, again, launching uh, some platforms, uh, some different classes next week, and you will be shooting, we'll be shooting out emails um, and showing little teasers of what's about to happen. If you haven't taken a look already, um, on my, matter of fact, I'll send a link to it in, um, in an email. But um, I did do a quick tutorial on how to do um, a drag and drop um, setup in the EPUB3 with the um, what's that thing called? Hey diddle diddle. Yeah. yeah, I think the uh, the program itself is um, if, if if having worked with uh, programs over the years like um, Macromedia, Adobe. Um, Toon Boom, um, no disrespect to them. Um, one of the things that I love is I'm almost in PubCoder pretty much every day and to go and start working and I look and I go, by the way, we just made another update. Really? Cool. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and it's not, oh, we forgot to shut the back door. It's just like, hey, we've added this functionality or we've changed this a little bit. And it's like, okay, this is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah. Love these guys. All right, so if there are no other questions, I'm getting ready to. Oh, coolness! I got that. I'm getting text. I was like, "Who am I getting all these texts from?" Um, but yeah, we're we're looking forward into doing this. Uh, there are a couple of there's a project. Um, dare I say? I don't know if it's going to come out next week. I don't know, but uh, there are. Um, and Eric, you'll appreciate this. Um, I'm probably going to do a particular project. This for, the first release is um, it's mainly focusing on uh, children's interactive books and, and apps. But the next project 
uh, I think I do want to focus almost squarely on um, comic books and going, okay, what can we do with this? How can we really push the envelope with this thing? Um, because I think it would be turning you over to the dark side. <laughs> Join oh, no. me. <laughs> I, I, so I've messed with comic books here and there, and, and I've actually I've done some comic book trailers and motion comics. And I think with this, the idea of having a character, if, if you're clicking on a panel and it actually breaks the frame, jumps out of the panel and get, jumps to the next page or something, you know, something crazy would be awesome. <laughs> so... But yeah, it's kind of um, like how do you push that envelope? How do you really uh, make it um, enjoyable? Um, and there's even, like I said, the, the stuff that they've done where, and if it, anyone who actually does understand stand code or JavaScript or anything like that, don't get me wrong. This isn't one of those programs where it doesn't let you get in there and get your hands dirty. Oh, they will if you want to. <laughs> so it's like there's stuff that... Um, my partner uh, Chris Garland and I, the, the stuff that we're doing, um, we're bringing in all of our animation that right now we're bringing it in via JavaScript um, and using things called, called a smart object. And um, it's just, like I said, the program is phenomenal. Let me see if I can bring up this without actually crashing anything. Bring up more. It's already open. Thank you. Okay. For instance, if I double click on the smart object, this is us bringing in our script, um, and we have our own sets of folders um, where we brought in Flash script. Show on the desktop. Let's see if I can do this real quick. Um, where is it at? This is one of the things that um I really love. Um, what I'm looking, matter of fact. Am I sharing my screen, or am I not? You are not, sir. I am not. Thank you. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Let me show you something. Okay. So, Let me show you something. <laughs> I was to say, how many people actually recognize that reference? Greatest uh, ever. Uh, all right. Let me get to Tex Wrangler. Hello, Tex Wrangler. Okay. Um, so... You want to know what you're looking at here? This <laughs> is our cat animation. <laughs> Did I type this? No. <laughs> so, um, this is uh, something that 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 Flash shot out as far as the uh, JavaScript, and so that's that's the that's how far you can really take uh, this program. It can go. You can go on very basic things, and then let's see if we cancel that. Um, like if you look right here in the dish runaway of the spoon, this is um in fact, let's go to page two. Now if I preview this. Um if you notice that there was no image when we looked at it inside of PubCoder. Um this is all in JavaScript. It's actually pulling in the background image. The cat itself is actually all code. Mm -hmm. So yeah, time okay. the internet is a little bit off, but um, yeah, that's us going into um, we animated that in Flash and then had it um come up with um HTML5 um and shooting out stuff on Canvas. None of this is possible in the KF8, which is why you are normally go with um the EPUB3. But yeah, it's we've got that mixed in with the uh, the normal little talk out loud thing or read aloud so. But yeah, there is like if you if you want to dive in, um, it allows you to do that at the same time. Um, it's like, hey, if you just want to keep it very simple, it lets you do that too. So I think it's pretty cool. So yes, next week I'll be sending out an email shortly. We'll be talking about the program. And um, if you've actually been watching and enjoying this, make sure if there's questions you'd like to have answered or if you said, hey, you know what would be really cool? If you showed us how to do blah. Um, we'll see if we can work that into the next webinar. And if it's too complicated, we'll either work that into a tutorial or it may be in one of the packages. Like I said, we're going to have 
uh, entry-level packages where it's just, um, hey, you can download the demo and you can build a book pretty easily, as well as we're going to have some more advanced things, uh, the top-tier program, we're going to actually have it where we show you in-depth how you can do things like bringing in JavaScript from other programs, um, like we've done here with the cat on the fiddle, and fun stuff like that. So yeah, um, I would definitely say check out the um, check out the demo. It is incredibly powerful and um, streamlined and well designed. The, the interface is just pretty <laughs> and functional. So. Yeah. Well, this has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com and BigBlockBooks.com. As always, keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>